Okay, that's right. In today's video, we're going to be going over an explanation of nuclear fission. This is part one of this video. Part two of nuclear fission will be where we calculate the mass defect and the binding energy, the energy released from the fission of your plutonium-239. Okay, so before we go on, also don't forget in the bottom right hand corner of this video, there's the subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Support my channel. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Now, here's a picture of the guy hanging out at the beach. He probably is going to go work on his tan or just finished working on his tan. He decided, well, let's just go over there and clean up this bomb. This is the fat boy bomb that was dropped at the end of World War II. And I just think it's amazing. It's like hanging out here in the chain, you know, not even being supported. It's just hanging out in this chain. What happens if we drop it? Here's the hangar. The guys sign their names on the bomb. I mean, these days, I think the way they store these things would probably be a little bit different. But things have changed. Okay, what is nuclear fission? Fission is the process by which a nucleus of an atom splits into two smaller or lighter nuclei. And usually when it splits, they're usually about the same size, two products, binary. They usually have a mass ratio of about three to two. So they're not exactly the same size, I know that, but they split, so they're approximately the same size. It produces a large amount of energy, kinetic energy, and also electromagnetic radiation. That's the heat, the energy, the light that you see when we have a nuclear fission or when you see a picture of a nuclear bomb or a video of a nuclear, nuclear bomb. Okay, this can occur through spontaneous radioactive decay, like uranium-235, for example, will spontaneously decay through alpha decay, which doesn't produce too much energy, it does produce some energy, but that only half, I mean, the half-life of uranium-235 is like 700 million years. So we can't wait around that long. We actually have to get a nuclear reaction to occur, so we use neutron bombardment, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And this is also called transmutation because the resulting nuclei are not the same element, right? You take a nucleus, you split it in half, you change the atomic number, you change the mass number, and you get two different elements from that. Okay, now this diagram shows an example of what we would call neutron bombardment. Here is the neutron. It's bombarding this uranium-235. When that neutron bombards that uranium-235, it can be absorbed by that uranium-235 and becomes momentarily uranium-236, which they're kind of showing you is unstable like that. And it will split and it will split into, in this case, in some cases it's different, in some cases it's like this, Krypton-92 and Barium-141, and it will release three more neutrons, which can go on and do some other stuff, which we'll talk about in a moment, and then this is the energy that is released, and that's the energy that we're usually kind of after when we do this nuclear bombardment. Okay, so common fuels for neutron bombardment, common fissile materials are uranium-235 and plutonium-239. And don't forget, in the next video, we're going to calculate the binding energy and the mass defect for the fission of your plutonium-239. Okay, these materials I mentioned are called fissile materials, and this is how we power nuclear submarines, nuclear reactors, and nuclear bombs. Okay, it's that energy through this neutron bombardment that we want when we want to have a nuclear reactor or to get energy, a nuclear power plant, and a bomb when we want to, unfortunately, make a bomb. Okay, now, this comes about through uh, the reactors and the bombs, they're looking for this mass defect or this binding energy. So what is mass defect? Okay, mass defect is not the mass is broken, it's just that some of the mass is missing, so to speak. And the fact is this, when we take the mass of Krypton-92 and add to that the mass, which you would look up, in a book somewhere, the mass, usually in unified atomic mass units, of barium-141, and then add to that the mass of three neutrons, that mass of those five things will be less than the mass we started, which would be, which would be the mass of a neutron plus the mass of your uranium-235. So we have less mass over here, more mass over here. Where did that mass go? We call that mass the mass defect, and that mass goes into the binding energy. That's the energy that's released from that fission reaction, and that's the energy that we kind of want that comes out as electromagnetic radiation and kinetic energy. That's the radiation that causes the damage from a bomb or the heat from a nuclear reactor or the heat from a bomb and the light and all that other stuff, and then some of the energy is kinetic energy, which moves these electrons, excuse me, these neutrons and these two pieces off in different directions, okay? So it's neutron bombardment, fissile materials, 
mass defect and binding energy. All right, now, when we have a nuclear fission reaction through bombardment, we kind of, we can call it uh, a nuclear, we can get it to occur as a nuclear chain reaction. Okay, and this diagram over here shows a nuclear chain reaction. If we have enough uranium-235, which we'll talk about that in a moment, we can take a neutron, uranium-235 becomes 236, splits, releases energy and the daughter products, Okay, and three more neutrons. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three. One of those neutrons can just fly off into nowhere and do nothing, so to speak. One of them could be absorbed by uranium-238 because most uranium is uranium-238 and just become uranium-239, and that's it. That's the end of that story. Or that neutron, one of those neutrons can be absorbed by another 235, which would become 236, which would split daughter products, energy, more neutrons, absorbed by more 235 daughter products, split more neutrons, and that causes a chain reaction to occur. Now, when we have a chain reaction, there's maybe two kinds of chain reactions. There's the controlled reaction, which we would have in a nuclear power plant, a nuclear reactor, or there's the uncontrolled reaction, which we would have in a nuclear bomb. But in order to get a chain reaction, we have to increase the concentration, we have to enrich the uranium, we have to increase the concentration of uranium-235. Because of the naturally occurring isotopes of uranium-235, most of it is 238, and 238 is not fissile. If a 238 absorbs a neutron, it just becomes 239, and that's it. It's the 235 we need to have this chain reaction occur and release the energy. So what we have to do is we have to take that 235, which is a small percentage of the naturally occurring isotopes of uranium, we have to enrich it. That's called uranium. That's called uranium enrichment when we increase the concentration of 235 by removing the 238, okay, with centrifuges and things like that. Now, I'm going to, just going to show you a little demonstration of how this works a little bit with this demonstration, the simulation by PHET Simulations. Check out their website. They have excellent simulations for chemistry and physics and math and science and all kinds of stuff. So this is when we're talking about a chain reaction. This is my gun. It's a neutron gun. Now, there isn't really a neutron gun, but it's kind of like a neutron gun because the neutron gun just shoots out neutrons. Bing, 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 bing. There's nothing there. So if we have kind of the regular, naturally occurring uranium, we have lots of uranium-238. The yellow ones are the 238, and we have a little bit of 235. Maybe a little more. Now you can see if I take a neutron and I shoot it into a 238, it's just absorbed by the 238, it becomes one of those things. The white ones are the 239s. Same thing with this uranium 238. And if I can shoot it into a 235, let's see if I can do this. I have a good aim here. Then the splits, the products, the neutrons, and they go on, but they didn't really do anything else. They just kind of flew away. So what we have to do is we have to increase, we have to enrich the uranium so we have more 235. So now I'm going to get rid of the 238. I'm going to increase the 235. I may just say I have a little bit of 238 left over, and I'm going to increase this a little more. And if I shoot this into this 238 again, it becomes a 238. Oops, I missed, and I released that chain reaction. When it absorbed by that 235, it becomes 236, splits into the daughter product, releases more neutrons, and those neutrons are absorbed by more 235s, and that's a chain reaction. And that's a bomb if you let that have an uncontrolled chain reaction. Or if you have a controlled chain reaction, then you can have that in a nuclear power plant. Okay? So that is a brief introduction into what nuclear fission is and how it works with neutron bombardment and chain reactions. Okay? In the next video, as I said, we'll calculate the uh, a, a mass defect in the binding energy for plutonium-239. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. Please don't forget, support my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share the video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.